It's been more than two months now since Typhoon Odette hit the Philippines. Here in Surigao City, hundreds of houses still remain in ruins. We're blessed that we're able to help rebuild 75 houses. These houses represent families. Each family represents a story. We are here in front of the house of Nana Ludi Lavilla, one of the recipients of our building construction materials. She is 83 years old and she has also uh, just a small amount of pension and she has a daughter that is sick. And so after uh, Typhoon Odette, they were not able to reconstruct their house because of many needs. But praise God for your giving and generosity that we, will, we are able to bring relief to this family. Thank you so much. I'm Roxanne Ragas from uh, Sitio Panal Salan, Barangay Labago, Surigao City. Uh, during the typhoon po, masyado pong mataas ang tubig dito. Nag-evacuate po kami doon sa bundok. Out of 20 houses, ang natira na lang po sa mga bahay na livable is uh, just 5 houses na lang po. Tapos, nagtutulungan pa kami as a, as a community to build one after another. There were 5 houses na wala pa talaga. Hindi pa sila nakabangon. So, tinulungan po kami ng NLCOM. Talagang marami, maraming salamat po sa NLCOM kasi malaking tulong po yun sa mga family na nahihirapan talagang mag-build. Kaya ngayon, maraming salamat po sa inyo. One of the families we are able to help is that of Jerry and Perla here in Barangay Cagniog. Their house was totally damaged by the typhoon. They have five children and their eldest son, PJ, has late mother development condition, while one of their daughters, Nova, has cerebral palsy. You can just imagine how difficult it has been for this family after the typhoon. They lived in a makeshift shelter. But now, they're back in their house and we were able to help them repair. They have a roof over their head. We were able to help them fix their flooring so the kids can be at least a bit comfortable with their condition. We want to say thank you to everyone who has given for this purpose. Indeed, together we were able to make a difference for this family. Marami marami salamat po sa New Life Community Foundation. Marami salamat sa tulong niyo po na mabigyan kami ng materialis para pampayos ang bahay namin. We were able to give uh, construction materials to the pastors over our city. Many of their members have enjoyed uh, the blessings we have given to them. And I believe through this, we have gained influence as a church. We are not only focusing on our uh, local church. Action speaks louder than words. We acted, we give, we, we demonstrate the love of Christ to our community. Salamat Karadyao, salamat sa tanan na nagtabang sa amo. Thank you very much to those who have helped us. God bless you. Salamat sa lahat na binigay sa amin. Thank you. Ako gina ko ka pa salamat. Salamat po sa biyaya. Thank you, thank you, and welcome. Once again, we thank you for your generosity. Together, we respond, we reach out, and we rebuild.
Okay, that's just so beautiful. I love watching that video. And yeah, good evening everyone. Even as we just uh, watched that recently released video from New Life Community Care Foundation, I want to reiterate that part at the end where it says, you know, with your generosity, with your giving, we can help rebuild more houses. And so, yeah, of course, once again, we just want to say thank you for those of you who have given for this purpose, for those of you who have prayed, uh, you, you have sown into what we were able to do. And that was our recent project. But then again, we're not done yet because, you know, as uh, as finances will start to come in and some has already um, come in no, uh, last Sunday, we will be able to do more. So pray with us. Do pray with us because this is what we do. This is who we are in New Life Community Care Foundation and we are including all of you guys. We respond, we reach out, and we rebuild. How about that? Us being the compassion arm of New Life. Uh, it's really uh, this is this is the avenue by which we embrace people we extend the love of god and it is something that's very tangible it is something that um is really felt you know by everybody so yeah all right okay so welcome to mental health matters it's yet another thursday evening and i'm just so excited for tonight's episode this is part two Part two, guys, of, uh, you know, identifying or finding your identity, finding your identity. And later on, Miss Fab, uh, you know, our psychologist will be able to, to join me. But at this point, I just want to um, really just encourage all of you. If you have tuned in already, welcome to all of you. And uh, why don't you go ahead and share the stream if you have friends, family members, loved ones, neighbors, whoever it is whom you know will benefit from our topic for this evening. Please go ahead and share the stream. And um, if you are watching this on a replay, I want you to know it's no coincidence that you are you are viewing this. And of course, our live audience tonight, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. In fact, I want to acknowledge uh, some of you guys, no, our, li our live audience. I want to thank our engagers. Uh, salamat sa engagers natin in Facebook and in YouTube. Uh, oi, Sir Ba, hi. Hello, good evening po, sabi ni, ni, ni Ba. Hi, Tita Manga. Good evening to you. How are you? Okay, si Miss Melny Ang. I, I believe I, I met you last Sunday, right? Miss Melny, you introduced yourself to me. Hello. Okay. Hi, Jonna. Okay, you know. Last Sunday was really wonderful. We had our NLCOM Sunday and we got to meet some of those who are engaging online. Okay, and nakakatawa kasi some of you approached me, introduced yourself to me. Salamat po sa inyo kasi we need that. We need that. You know, we see your names in, in FB and in YouTube and there are times when we couldn't really, kasi we haven't really met. Not all of us uh, have met uh, face to face. But because you are starting to come back to church for those of you from new life it's it's really good that you get to uh, approach us and introduce yourselves to us so let's do more of that you know this is your community aside from here in mhm in mental health matters of course there's nlcom there is new life yeah okay so there someone you know cox is saying hi to gawis who is gawis that's our dog you heard her bark <laughs> all right so she's also excited to join our episode for tonight okay so again, go ahead and share the stream. Okay, so uh, more and more people will get blessed by what we will be discussing for this evening. Okay, all right. So because it's finding your identity, I read this verse last week. I want to read it again. In Psalms chapter um, 139, verse 13 to 16. And I remember saying this, that, you know, David had this revelation. He had this revelation in terms of, um, you know, who made him, who created him. We all know from Genesis that God, God said, let us make man, let us make man in our image after our own likeness, right? So we were made in the image and likeness of God. And when God said, let us make man, you know, who was he talking to because of the plural tense, us? He was referring actually to, you know, the God the Father was talking to God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So the three part being of God. And so if we are made in the image and likeness of God, you know, God being a three part being, then we too are three part being. We are spirit. We possess a soul and we live in a body and more you know even even with that the the you know psalmist david got this revelation and i want to share it with you here in psalms 139 uh, 13 of uh, verse uh, 13 to 16 then we'll jump to 18 where it says here for you formed my innermost parts you meet me together in my mother's womb i will give thanks and praise to you 
For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Imagine that. Imagine how the psalmist David got that revelation that he is not just so-so, but he is not just, you know, hindi ka lang basta-basta. I want to say that, hindi ka basta-basta. You were made, you, you, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are God's works, and that includes you. You have been fearfully and wonderfully made by God, and my soul knows it very well. Look at that. It's talking about the soul as well, right? Your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. You remind yourself every day that you have been, you know, fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And so when you're feeling down and low, you remind yourself, come on, come on, you know, um, put a smile on your face. You who was made in the image and likeness of God, you have been fearfully and wonderfully made by God. If you're feeling, I, I got a word, ugly. If you're feeling ugly, you know what? Look at look at your face in the mirror. Put a smile on your face. If you need for the ladies, if you need to put a bit of a makeup, do it. Okay, but you you bring yourself to a place where wait a minute, I am made in the image and likeness of God. You know, my God is a beautiful God. You you are beautiful. To all my sisters here, I want I want you to know this. I want to remind you of you being made in the image and likeness of God. You are beautiful. You are you are pretty. And all my brothers, I want to remind you, you are handsome, okay? Remember, I mentioned last time, my husband, si Paul, would say this. Uh, this verse, yung Tagalog daw nito, kilabot daw sa kapugihan, fearfully, wonderfully and fearfully made. So, however you're gonna interpret that, if your interpretation is kilabot ka sa kapugihan, you go ahead, you take it, let it be yours. Nonetheless, that is who you are in Him, made in His image and likeness. Let's, let's just finish this verse I'm preaching already. And so here it says, you know, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made or formed in secret and intricately and skillfully formed as it embroidered with many colors, that's beautiful, in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. And look at this. And in your book were all written. You are not an accident. Even, you know, the day-to-day -day things, I really believe this. Everything has been written. You know, you have like you have a book. You have God has plans for you. And he has written those plans for you. All you need to do is to discover his plans, his purposes for you. And walk in it. Walk in it. Amen? And so here, um, when the days that were appointed for you, when as yet there was none of them, even taking shape. Okay? Verse 18, if I could count them, they would outnumber the sand. And when I wake up, I am still with you. Tonight when you sleep, be reminded of God's presence in your life. He loves you. So no matter what you went through this day, whatever happened as you sleep tonight, be reminded of this love. And when you wake up tomorrow morning, remember this, God is still with you and you are still with Him because He's true to His words. He will never leave you nor abandon you. Amen? And so those are beautiful, beautiful reminders. And let's let's just feed ourselves on that. Even as for tonight, you know, we're gonna um, delve into part two of finding your identity. So yeah, I wanna call on Miss Fab. You know, um, she's such a wonderful blessing. So everybody, let's welcome uh, Miss Fab. Hello, good evening, everyone. Hi, Pastora Heidi. Hi to all our viewers of uh, Mental Health Matters. Yeah, good evening, Fab. So as you all know, to all the viewers here, no. Uh, Ms. Fab is a licensed um, psychologist and she has been a, a clinical psychologist and she has been such a great help. She also runs Fully Psych, okay? And so if, if uh, there are things that you wanted to inquire, uh, you just, you can go ahead and check them out in Facebook. Uh, also in IG, right, Ms. Fab? Okay, Fully Psych. Yes, yes. Right, Pastor. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so... I remember last week, uh, some of the things, uh, my takeaways, my takeaways, some of the things that I got from your talk, from your lecture. I remember when you talked about um, truth versus opinions, truth versus opinions. And that really resonated to me because you mentioned that if you hear people say something about you, is it the truth or is it just an opinion? Wow. And so... Of course, when I heard it, I'm like, yeah, that is so true. Whenever, whenever you hear a comment, whenever you hear people say things, you know, you've got to, you've got to uh, understand and realize it. You know, is this, is this a truth, or is it just an opinion? Because it really matters. And another thing that you talk about is when you mention, you know, conditions of worth, conditions of worth. Okay, such as conditional love, things that you do. 
um, you know, to be valued by other people, it, it's very important. You know, when you're doing something, are you doing it so you will find value? You know, you being a people person, right? Our, our man pleaser. Okay, so all of those things, pala, guys, no, fall under, you know, finding your identity. And so, um, I'm excited because Fab has uh, other stuff that she will be discussing. But I want us to start with this, Miss Fab, because there were questions that were not answered last last week. And let's answer one question before Fab will continue with um, the discussion. And so this is the question that I want us to talk about, Fab. Um, how should I or how do I overcome identity crisis? Okay, so ayon identity crisis. So what can you say about this, Fab? Yeah, uh, for that question, Pastora Heidi, I think we can uh, start first um, understanding where that uh, term came from. Actually, the term identity crisis, that first came from Eric Erikson. So he's the proponent of psychosocial theories. So he was the first one to introduce the ideas of identity crisis, even the midlife crisis. Sa kanya din galing yun. So he believed that... Uh, personalities are actually developed by resolving crisis in life. So uh, he's saying that um, there are different crises in every stage of our lives that we need to overcome. So if a, usually an individual experiences an identity crisis, they may be questioning their sense of self or their sense of identity. And this can often occur due to many factors, be it big changes or stressors in life, or due to factors such as you know age, pending um, advancement, for example, for a certain age, school, so work, childhood, or influence of the social media. No, the messages that we get around us from friends, from 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 many people from the external world that can actually cause conflicts in terms of how we view ourselves. So how would you first find out or what are the typical signs na, oh, oh you're having identity crisis already? Unang una, when you're starting to question who you are, okay? When you start to ask yourself, tinatanong mo na sarili mo overall or with regards to, you know, a certain life aspect such as relationship or age or your career, no, or yourself, your identity. And then another sign is that you're exper experiencing great personal conflict. So there's that tension, may confusion due to the questioning of kung sino ka o ano yung role mo sa society. So there are big changes that have recently occurred as well that have affected your sense of self. For example, separation, you know, annulment being... Uh, um, having like a undergoing a, a breakup, you know, with a, with either a short or long term relationship with the people that you love, you no, know? and you're questioning things like your values, your spirituality, your beliefs, your interests, your career path, you no, know? even your career path that have a major impact on how you see yourself. So you're also trying to you know look for a meaning. Ano nga bang purpose ko sa buhay ko? Ano nga ba yung passion ko? No, what is really my life? Why am I here on earth? What am I intended to, you know, what's my role? What's my passion here? My purpose. So that can also count as an identity crisis. Okay. So the question now is how do we overcome this, this crisis, identity crisis? So here's what you need to know. And um, uh, it, it, it's, it's often like, you know, hard and it's it's such a big struggle right but there are 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 things and steps that you can do and the very first that um you can do is to visualize your best possible future self that means spiritually emotionally and physically so try to visualize yourself when you when you just you're just so confused you don't know like um how how, how you are, how you want to be yourself. So try to close your eyes and imagine yourself. What is my best, what does my best possible self look like in all aspects of me? So not, that's in your physical, your emotional and spiritual sense, areas. So, and you know, identity crisis that can creep up so quickly and it can take so many forms 
of self-doubt, rejection, insecurity, and so many things more. There's a lot of conflict. But know that the more rooted you are in the Word of God, the quicker you will be encountering the effects of identity crisis. Okay. Of course, we want to hang on to the Word, what's the truth, right? And yeah. if you bank your your identity on what is eternal, not us, not in what is just a fad or something that's temporary, then then you have a solid foundation of, of your identity. Okay, so that's the first step. Now the second is, of course, this is going to be easier said than done. Is but we you need or we need to be open to change. Okay. That's very important. We need to have that sense of flexibility, that intentionality, that um, conscious effort of being able to, to be open to change in, you know, in being the best version of ourselves holistically. And the last step that we can do is to, of course, ask for support, right? Because, again, this is easier said than done. It's hard, but... It doesn't mean that it's hard that we, we cannot overcome identity crisis. So we can ask ask the support of, of the people uh, whom we are comfortable talking with, or our life group leaders, or pastors, or, or most especially we can ask God's support. You know, so we need to experience God's perspective. You ask God, what is your perspective in terms of my crisis right now? Okay, and then you can ask for His spiritual strength and wisdom in daily living to prepare you, you know, for that uh, living, daily living in your life. So I think that's my take, Pastora. No? Um, these are three steps that we can remember in overcoming identity crisis. It, it's so full and it's it's really good, no, Miss Fab, because um, even I was listening to you and when you mentioned that there's really a lot of factors that causes this, um, so even with that understanding that there's a lot of factors, the process of overcoming is not an overnight thing, right? It's not an automatic right. thing. That's why I really think, you no, know, for 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 you, if if that is you and you are in the place where you're struggling in this area, how do I I uh, overcome identity crisis? I don't know, but I'm just thinking, even even with everything that the three steps that Miss Fab um, mentioned. I think also one of the things that maybe I can take from this is not focusing too much on the how should I overcome, how should I overcome, but really on, on the process. Like number two, I think that's very key. Be open to change. Embrace change. Embrace the process of, you know, of, of change because it might be that um, even as you're going through this process of change, it can also, it really affects your your identity like example correct me if i'm i'm wrong miss fab okay for a woman who who just got married probably so from a single to married that that status of course it also affects the identity in a sense right and then especially for women kasi and then here you are okay you're a married woman and probably two to three years down the line you become a mom so there are stages and changes and so like ah there's just so many things that you're you know and then when you got pregnant physically diba nagkakaroon ng change din yung yung body mo so hormonal changes and all of that so i think embracing this this process as well is is very important and then i i would hear people say i don't like myself now compared to who i was you know i like myself better before and if that is going to be like your comparison, you just have to accept the fact that there are changes. You you are going through changes and embrace that because, of course, no, in life, you can, you know, you, there will be different roles, right? There will be different roles that you will be, um, you know, you, you, will, uh, you will have to embrace as well. And it might affect, but it does not mean to say that you are a totally, totally different person. So I don't know. It's it's um and and for me, I'm just getting this because I was I was asking, wow. So is this is such a big deal? Is this such a big deal for people? You know the identity crisis. And then yun nga as I was listening to you answer the question, 
it became more clear to me na, oh yeah, this is really a big thing. But if we but embrace the process of change that we are in and that we constantly go through, I really believe that helps a lot. And if there is something that we must not forget about identity, our identity that will never change is the fact that we are, you know, we are God's children. Tama, di ba, Miss Fab? Yan ang hindi magbabago. Ke single ka, tapos naging married ka, kung ano man, nagbago man ang mga roles natin. But when it comes to our identity being God's children, okay, that you are sons and daughters, that you have, you know, you are loved by God. These are things that will remain constant. And so, those are the truths that we must bank on. So, amen. I love this. And I pray that um, you guys are being ministered to even as we're talking about this because we just actually started. <laughs> so, I'm going to give some more time to Miss um, Fab to talk about other stuff uh, pertaining to finding your identity. And I will see her towards the end. So, we will try. We will try. I'm not promising, but we're going to try to answer some other questions later on. So, I'll see you later, Fab. All right. Thank you so much, Pastora Heidi. Now, um, if we can continue with the part two of finding your identity, Siguro, um, I want to ask you, have you ever, you know, had that point in your life when you said, who am I? Or you ask yourself, sino nga ba ako? Gaano ko ba kakilala yung sarili ko? Now, when, when, perhaps somebody asks you, like, who are you? Right? What's your primary identity? Were you able to answer that question right away? Or did it take you some time? Or did you ponder then and ask yourself, oh nga, sino nga ba ako? No. So let's get down again to the core of who you are and try to peel layer by layer, no? And see who you are at the very core. Because understanding ourselves, our identity, most especially, is very important. In our current world, it can be, you know, very confusing to find any stable identity. So it's critical that we find and begin to understand who we are to the core. So let's just have a quick recap of what we have discussed last week. We said uh, and tried defining what self-concept or self-identity is. And we said last time that our identity defines who we are. And that is often like to what we do, what we like, where are we from, or how we subjectively see ourselves. It is our perception of ourselves. And so this is identity is also how we uniquely think as an individual, how we uniquely choose, and how we uniquely behave. Okay. And as I've mentioned, Erickson, Eric Erickson, he has his own definition of identity. And for him, he described it as a fundamental organizing principle which develops constantly throughout the lifespan. So our identity, according to him, involves the experiences, our relationships, our beliefs, our values, and memories. You know, those are the things that make up a person's subjective sense of self. So there is a need for us. Each of us actually need to find our identity, to know our identity, because kung hindi, the world will brand us right or we will just become whatever we focus on the most and but if we know if we don't know who we are then there is a chance for us to start you know perpetually compare ourselves to other people or we feel jealous or we feel threatened by by someone else right and we don't know who we are our concept or even our esteem now what happens when we have a negative view of ourselves. We said last time that whenever we have an inadequate or a negative self-image or concept, that can rob us of the energy you know, and powers of attention to relate to others. Why? Because again, we are self-absorbed. We tend to look in our own adequacies. We're just so focused, hyper-focused in our inadequacies. And that is especially true when you know we're in the presence of people who remind us of our shortcomings or our judgments or their judgments about ourselves that we value or we want to influence okay and so there on the other extreme there are other people naman who try to you know they base their self-image depending on what other 
on other people's opinions. Okay, the praises, criticisms, those are the determining factors in how they feel or think about themselves. And so when they have that, okay, they become dependent on what other people would 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 say about them, then that can affect their sense of worth. And some people they get a poor sense of self-worth, okay, and they become slaves to the opinions of others. And they therefore they are not free to be really their authentic selves. So how do we find our true identity? Ano nga ba yung mga steps and ways para malaman natin na sino nga ba talaga tayo? Ano nga ba talaga yung totoong identity natin? So, let's try to discuss some steps that can show how we can find our authentic self. The very first one that we need to take note of is to cultivate awareness. Okay. Cultivate awareness. Be aware of who you are. How do you do this? By introspection, by reflection, looking into your inner self, your emotions, your thoughts, and values. Okay. So becoming self-aware of who you are means that you have a deeper understanding of your very core identity. It is knowing what exactly drives you to do things the way you want them. Okay. And self-awareness helps you to build a solid foundation that you can rely on in moving forward into your future. Without self-awareness, without you being uh, cultivating awareness, then we can, you know, we would tend to look out into the world for happiness and that would deny us the chance to know of who we really are. So the number one thing that we need to do is to be honest with ourselves and that is by cultivating self-awareness. Okay, that starts that starts the process. Number two, when you're done cultivating awareness, the next thing that you can do is to ask yourself, okay, and reflect on this question. What is the most important thing for me? Ano ba yung pinakamahalaga sa akin? Because when you ask and you, you ask that question, and you find out the answer to that question, that is what becomes your identity. You ask yourself, what is my heart leaning towards? That Because that goes who you are as a person. So if you say that, okay, the most important thing for me is my career, then your primary identity would be, you know, hinge onto that career. Or if the most important thing for you, for example, is your role as a mother, then your role as a person then would be, you know, your identity is that you're, you're, you see yourself as a mother first before anything else, right? But if your work or if you work on heart, your heart to long for Christ and the things of Christ, that becomes your identity. Kung ano yung pinaka-importante sa'yo, kung ano yung pinaka, you know, what your heart is containing to, that follows your identity, that it becomes your identity. Now, the moment, the moment that you believe in Jesus, you have a new identity in Christ, right? When you decide to take Christ and make him the center point of who you are, that is the identifier that is going to leave you to freedom, okay? So in, in, in 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. A creature. The old things have passed away, and behold, new things have come. Right? So when Christ is not in us, when Christ is not in our lives, we feel that there's that void, that there's that gap, there's that empty hole in our in our heart. Okay. So that's the second step. Ask yourself the question, and ba yung pinaka important sa buhay ko? No. The third process, or the, the third step that you can um, do in order to find your true identity is to let go of your negative preconceived notions, thoughts, and beliefs about yourself and start reflecting into the word to learn how God sees you, to learn how God views you personally. Okay, Because finding one's identity involves having an intimate relationship with God. Knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior, it's the first step. But to find your true identity, you have to understand. We must understand God's role in our lives as a father 
and understand that his love for us is unconditional. It's, you know, this unconditional love that allows us to walk in our purpose without fear of failure. So what if, for example, you ask, I don't have a relationship with, with, with Christ, like what, what do I do? Then, then you can ask Jesus to show you the way to God. You, know, you can, you can um, have, accept him in your heart and just really, you know, have that, um, uh, that, that, that thirst and that craving for God to enter in your life and to let God intervene in your life. And that will become the beginning of a mind-blowing experience for you. Okay, Because what does the Bible says about once you have a new identity in Christ? Okay, What is our identity in Christ? We keep on saying this, our identity in Christ. Now, there are a lot of things that the Bible is saying about our identity in Christ. Ano ba yun? There are different um, the, the different no, na mga, uh, scriptural basis for this. Okay? The Bible is saying that our, our identity in Christ, we are loved. We are loved beyond compare. Okay? That's one. The, and the Bible is also saying that we are chosen, handpicked by God who created the uni- universe. We are treasured. We are valuable. We are irreplaceable. We are worth dying for. We are forgiven. We are his children. We are secure in the sustaining power of Christ. We are precious to him. You are set apart. Okay. So just imagine how how wonderful it is to know, you know how God sees us, how God is saying about our identity. Okay. Our identity is a good identity because Christ is in us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And as a believer, our identity in Christ is not based on our personal goodness, on our personal characteristics. Instead, our identity is a demonstration of God's grace at work in in us to to justify us and to sanctify us in Him. Right? Now, on good days, it might be easy to agree, yes? It might be easy to say that, well, good, uh, it's so good to you know know these um these truths but then when we hit rock bottom or when challenge comes our way the question is do we still believe it do we still embrace it do, or do doubts arise when it comes to our how we see ourselves you no know, in christ but know that no matter how you feel today or who you used to be, or what you're going through, your identity in our loving Father is who you are for eternity. Because Jesus died and rose again for that forgiveness of your sins. When you receive sacrifices if to you, you instantly became his. And this is who you are. So if, if you have Christ in your heart, the world's approval doesn't matter anymore. Why? Because you have a heavenly father who loves you more than anyone. And his love for you doesn't change. It never fails. It is eternal. It is forever. So, wow, that's just a breath of air to know that, wow, I am so loved unconditionally, that you are so loved unconditionally. So take some time to reflect on these truths of who you are and receive them in humility. And try to, you know, read them, the Bible, regularly to remind yourself of your true identity. And it's only through Jesus that we are these things. We didn't earn it, okay? So we can't brag about it or take advantage of it. We can claim it and hold our heads up high because in the end, we will stand victorious in Christ. So... When you see yourself, your identity, as Christ sees you or as how God sees you, others may begin to see you that way as well. If you are steady and secure in your identity in him, then your actions, your your speech, the manner you behave, your life, that will express God's love. So remember who your father says who you are because it's in him where your true identity can be found. 
it's not in your career, it's not in your house, it's not in your car, it's not in your possession, not in your family or elsewhere, but you can only find it with God. Because we are His children, and that's worth celebrating. You are worth celebrating. Okay. Now, let's talk about self-worth. Okay. Because this is usually important as well when it comes to talking about identity. Now, there are two types of identity of, of self-worth, right? So this when we say self-worth worth to begin with, this is how much we put value in ourselves, right? But there is also what we call a Christ-centered self-worth, right? And I know many of us feel insecure at times. Many, many of us, sometimes we feel like we're not that worthy. But maybe that's because we keep trying to find our worth and security in the wrong things, right? And struggles with self-worth, they often occur when our identity is primarily resting on our performance and other people's opinions. It's also further complicated by a history of, example, trauma, abuse, family experiences, problems, situation, or excessive comparison to others and emotional struggles. But our self-worth, know and take note of this, our self-worth should be based on two sources. Being created in God's image is number one, and number two, our position in Christ. Base your worth in your position in Christ. And not what the what the other people are telling you, but based on how God sees you, based on your possession in Christ. Remember that the enemy, our enemy, would like nothing more than to get us trapped in the lies that tells us that our value, our worth, that what makes us good enough wholly depend on our career, our success, on the amount of money that we have in the bank, your family, your marriage, your relationship, your health children, etc. It could be any number of things that is not centered on Christ. Okay. So we need to, I think this is a good reminder for all of us that in Christ, we are firm and secure in him. He's always with us and we'll always have the stamp of approval from him. We never have to try harder for him to love us more. We never have to beg for him to stay. Because all those things are a part of his character. His unshakable love is who he is. And as Christians, we're a part of it. So I want to make a call to action for everyone who's viewing MHM right now. Now, if you're listening to this and you don't have a personal relationship with Christ yet, and you want to know, you want to have that um, identity in Christ, and you want to know what God says about you and how God sees you. I invite you to, to accept him in, in your heart. Invite him to be in your life. You know? And just dive into God's words and some important truths about who the God of all creation says who you are. Okay, And we have to remember, having an identity in Christ means you see yourself you value yourself through the lens of who Christ says you are. Okay, that is the standard. Through the lens of the cross, through the lens of God's words. That's a very power, powerful truth to understand. So your identity based in Christ empowers you to communicate and act according to how you will uniquely think, feel, and choose. And remember that uh, it will also enable us to reflect this image like a light on a hill. Okay, So let's not base our identity on temporary things. Let's base our identity on how God sees us. Okay, That is eternal. So thank you. And um, I hope that you got a thing or two tonight. And I'll uh, turn over the floor and call Pastor Heidi for if there are questions from our viewers tonight. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, that was such a, a beautiful um, topic that you discussed, you no know, pertaining to uh, 
I, I love it about um, okay, finding my true identity. So again, no, three steps, three steps that Ms. Fab uh, discussed earlier about, you know, how do I find my, not not even just identity, but my true identity. Ayan, okay, the true identity that we can only find in Him. Now, you might be thinking as you're listening to this, no, because understanding also that, Fab being a professional psychologist, a clinical psychologist, and then why is it that in her talk, especially tonight, talking about identity, that is obviously rooted in the Word of God. She keeps talking about Christ. She keeps talking about God. And, you know, she's even citing verses. Um, because, you know, aside from what she studied, and I'm, I'm you know, just just you can go ahead and, and and just butt in or add more fab no but this is what i've seen uh the difference there is that she is not just basing it on things that she studied per se when it comes to science and research but the truth of the word which i really believe uh sets us apart it sets you apart as a believer and so if you are new to this and you are hearing it and you're like uh, you're actually curious about this it's good that um fab was able to pray and you know invited you to you know to invite jesus in your heart because that's actually where it all starts finding your true identity based on the word of god that we're talking about here based on you know being christ centered it all starts with a personal relationship with god through christ jesus and uh, there's no shame that we talk about this. We talk openly about it because um, this is our basis. This is actually very foundational for us. And so this is not just, you know, this is not myth. It's more than a religion. It's not a religion, no, but it's based on this relationship that we have in him. To be honest with you, if it's not for this relationship that I have with Christ, I wouldn't have this confidence as well, this confidence and this, this self-worth know that i have you know I, I wouldn't be able to um have this confidence to talk to you about these things you know every week you you hear us you hear me um talking about these things why is it that i have the the, the courage and the confidence and the compassion also to to bring a message like this to people why do we say mental health matters because we know that first and foremost it it matters to god it matters to god what you're going through is not far from god's sight he sees your struggles he sees you know the questions he sees whatever it is that you are going through right now and he does not just see it he understands i remember um, even uh, on, in scriptures where Jesus himself, you know why Jesus had to become man? He had to become man because he needed to be at a place where he can really say, what you're going through, I went through. And, and that is so true. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted at all points. He got tempted at all points, yet he did not sin. So in his humanity, he experienced, he experienced to be, um, you know, he experienced to be hurt. Was he hurt? Oh, yes, he was hurt. He was, um, you know, a lot of things happened to him. Do you think there was also a point in time where he, he felt he was alone? Most definitely, especially the time when he was carrying the cross and um, he was going to die. You know, the, the scripture says that God the Father turned his back on him. Why? Because this was the moment when sin was placed upon Jesus. And so there's so many instances in scriptures when Jesus was walking here on earth that he experienced all those things that humanity is going through. That's why when when this, when when he says that he understands, he really does. He went through it all. You know, people turned their backs on him as well. And, um, you know, there was a time when people wanted to stone him to death, right? But because it wasn't his time yet, he was able to escape. So imagine people whom he loved, people whom he taught, people whom he embraced would actually, you know, uh, turn, turn out to be the people who would crucify him as well. So, so many things that our Savior went through, but, you know, he had to go through it to let us know that he understands us. And so that's amazing. That's how amazing my Savior is because um, he 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 lived it out. He lived it out. And so I don't know. I, I'm just saying this because I feel like there is somebody who's watching right now who you're thinking, you know, God is so far away from you and he doesn't understand. I am telling you, give him a chance. Give him a chance to to embrace you. Give him a chance to let, let you know that he cares. He understands. Um, and 
he's there with you even if at times we don't feel it okay but just just be just give it a chance allow him to love on you and allow him to reveal himself to you so yeah this is really beautiful even as we're, we're talking about these things i love those three steps i just want to go through it again cultivate awareness you know self-awareness number two ask yourself reflect on what's the most important um thing for you right now and i love what you mentioned um again fab about you know long for christ because as you long for him as you focus on that him being the most important then that becomes your identity ah it's so beautiful and another thing that you mentioned is to let go of your negative preconceived notions and start reflecting on the word to learn how god views you so see these are these are steps that we can actually um live by and again process i i keep saying the process be patient because it's not like a, a one-time thing now oh i followed the man step one two and three how come you know it's not yet i uh, know it's not yet happening so uh I, I wanna i wanna let you know that you know in, in this process in this process you are not alone yeah and that's also why we are here as a community amen all right okay so um there there's actually a question here someone is asking if we are offering uh one-on-one -on -one counseling and so yeah as a church we do offer that you no know, if, if you want to come you can actually uh, we can we can schedule with you if you're ready to come face to face you can actually we encourage you to come to church um if if you want to get to know us and you have want to schedule counseling you know you come to church and at the end of every service you can go to our next steps table inquire for counseling we can do that now if you're referring to a professional counseling and um therapy just like what uh, miss fab is doing um you know we we she can do it for you as well in fact i mentioned ito yun. if you want to consult personally with miss fab calipara please contact her uh, at her fb fully psych and that's her email as well so it's being flashed right now and yeah fab you want to say something about that yeah so uh you, you can just uh, send uh, drop us a, a private message no at um our facebook page or on instagram and uh we'll be having our our website as well so you can also contact us through that website so um i just want to also like gusto ko lang sasugan din pastora yung the need why we really need to uh you know view our, our identity holistically because I like what you said that um, God also cares for our mental health. That we're made of, we have three, three. We're composed of three dimensions and areas, and, and that is our spirituality, our 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 soul, no, which is composed of our mind, our will, and emotions, and our body. And some people they may you know base their identity only on on the worldly aspect, right, or their psychological aspect. But we need to integrate these three. That's how we should, you know, operate. It's how we should really view things. And, and that's how our perspective should be when it comes to dealing with our identity. Not just actually even our identity, but and, and how we deal with ourselves in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's so good, no? Na, um, we, we look into that and we acknowledge these things and... You know, I, I feel like um, I also want to say this. You are not alone in this, no? You're not alone in this journey. You're not alone in this, um, shall we say, struggle. <laughs> in fact, I remember as we are as we came up with Mental Health Matters being the title of our program, we had that hashtag that um, came with it, which is uh, the struggle is real. <laughs> the struggle is real, guys. Really, it is. And um, that's why now we, we talk openly about these things. But um, if there's also one thing that we know of is even if the struggle is real, our God is more real. Our God is more real and he holds the solution to whatever it is that that we need, whatever it is that, um, you know, we we are, uh, you know, we're struggling with. That's why it gives us that confidence na kaya natin to, no? Kaya natin ito. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at some, um, there's a question here and we're, I'm trying to formulate <laughs> how to say it, okay? So um, I think this was also a question last week. I'm not sure if we answered it. But then this is uh, about, you know, um, how do you talk yourself out of countless negative expectations and uh, rejections? Okay. So I'm not really sure if we discussed this last week because it, it's kind of related also to, I think this came from a uh, the same person who has another question for this week. But uh, I, I feel like this person went through a lot of rejections. And so 
uh, it seems that um, every time, no, every time na um, those similar situations, you know, happen, it's automatic. Nagiging automatic na pumupunta siya sa point na ito. So this question is, how do you talk yourself out of it? And um, I wanted to bring this up, Miss Fab, because is it is it true? Is it right? Can you talk yourself out of it? Or is there a better process? Is there a better solution to it? Not merely, you know, talking yourself out of it. Mm. I, I'm just wondering, Pastor, if that's in the context of relationships, like feeling rejected of the, the other party, you know? So if, let's say in the, if it's the, in that context, you know, that you felt rejected for whatever reasons that, that might have happened, and it didn't happen just one time or, or twice, but may, probably multiple times, and you might start to formulate, you know, some conclusions about yourself, you know, now, oh, why is this happening? Why is there a pattern? Is it because I'm unlovable? Is it because I'm, you know, so I guess to answer that question is try to, first of all, find out like what are the thoughts that, that, that the belief that you have about yourself that arise, you know, stemming from that rejection. Okay. If you started to view yourself negatively because of that experience and you start to embrace it, you know, then you, you need to uh, tell yourself and remind yourself that your worth, mm -hmm. just because you were rejected, doesn't mean that you're worthless as a person or you're unlovable as a person. Remember, again, you know, these things, people's actions, we can't control. They're beyond our control. Yeah. But what yeah. we can only control is how we're, we're going to respond, how we're going to react, you know, doing sa circumstances na yon. And so if you choose to react that and, and let that rejection teach you a lesson or two about yourself and also how you can improve out of that rejection and bank on instead na, well, I am secure, my identity with Christ, even if I was rejected. I know that, 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 someone loves me unconditionally even if that person rejected me at least i know in my heart that um there is someone who whose love is so unshakable unfathomable and limitless so steadfast i am secure in that love so so yes that's that's one thing that you can do no if not kasi that will eat you up the rejection will eat you up before you know it uh look mokana in, in, in so many negative emotions yeah okay so um that that's so good i, I was thinking also for that person it's it's also probable that uh you know maybe in, in a relationship and it did not happen one time maybe twice or even more that's why it can become traumatic right it can be traumatic for you but I think that's also the reason why you keep hearing the same thing over and over again, even from this, uh, you know, from this place where we talk about these things. Because this is not actually just the first time we're talking about, um, you know, our identity in Christ. We we always, if you observe, there's a thread. It's actually a common thread from start to end where we always refer to knowing who you are, our foundation, where are we founded, about the truth of the word of God. And so that's, that's basically it, you know. Um, whoever that person is, and if it's something that really affects you, you keep going back to that. You keep going to, um, you know, uh, the word and discover. It's a discovery. Discover who you are, not based on experiences of the past. Again, is it truth? Or if, if you hear something, is it um, an, just merely an opinion? Or is it the truth? So I, I really believe those are those are really uh, important things that you should also evaluate. No, that we evaluate. And I love what, what Fab said. It's actually a response. We cannot control how people will um say, comment, you know, or even uh they will react, but it is our response that's within our control. So yeah, and there is hope. Uh this morning that was something that uh, I, I heard during NLTC about no matter what it is, when, even when it comes to addictions and all. So even with, when it comes to trauma, even when it comes to things like our self-identity, there is hope in him. So we can we can bank on uh, the reality and the truth of the word of God, you know, on how he how he loves us. Amen. How he loves us. I know um, it's already time, but I want to I want to entertain this last question um, here. Okay, so so Pab, this is the question. Identity, purpose, and passion are like one but three uh three prompts. 
which one should I determine first? Okay? Is it correct to say that identity is the most important and critical among the three? So um, this person is saying, you know, identity, purpose, and passion, okay? Which would be the most, is it, is it uh, you know, is there such thing as like, you know, you have to uh, put importance, it's the most critical thing. Is it identity or is there such thing as that? I think that's also one of um, the ways siguro na we can, we can ask that question. I think you're muted. You're muted, Fab. Sorry. But I believe, Pastor, that um, identity is the, the most important and the critical among the three. Because that's where everything will start. Eh? When you get to hold and understand in the, the deepest core of who you are, then your purpose and your passion will follow. Because part uh -huh. of your identity... Is also like you know knowing what will be what's your purpose and what's your passion in life, right? You cannot you cannot find your purpose and your passion if you don't know who you are to begin with. Yeah. So yeah. To know that love is really very uh, fundamental and the start the jump point uh, in, yes. in my personal opinion in finding your, your passion and your purpose. So that will just follow eventually. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, very, very important. That's true. So even with our relationship with God, really, it starts with that. Knowing who He is and who we are in Him. That's identity. You've got to know God as, uh, you know, of course, Jesus as our Savior. But that we don't stop there. Why did He save us? Why did Jesus come to save us? Because we are loved and that's identity. Because He loves us. And it, it, it is because of that love uh, that enabled the Father to send His one and only Son. Okay, so that we can become sons and daughters. So that's identity, right? So even with that, I am love. That's part of my identity. I am a, I am a daughter. You know, you are a son. That That is part of your identity. And with that, as you discover and you walk in that, as you grow in your identity, and yeah, purpose and passion will just follow. So uh, it all works together. And so I love it. Also, this is this is one thing, no? as someone who is um, a minister, a pastor, um, my identity as God's daughter is it it enables me actually to serve him so you know it it doesn't start with serving it starts with sonship first you know as i see myself as a daughter of god uh i align myself in his purpose for me and the reason why i am serving him is coming from a viewpoint or coming from a foundation that i am a child of god so that's versus you know, if I got it the other way around, uh, oh, the reason why I'm serving God is so that I can be loved by Him and I can be accepted as His child, then I got it all wrong. Did you get it? But if my starting point is my identity in Him, uh, hey, I am God's child, and as His daughter, I am His, I am His child, I choose to serve Him because out of that place of, you know, being a, a daughter loved by God, I couldn't help but really give back to God, you know, in service. And yeah, that's that's actually a reflection. So here I am. And also, you know, um, Miss Fab, even with the gifts and the talents that God has given to her, what we're doing right now is in service to God's kingdom. But we're not doing this in a place of just serving. But our standpoint and our foundation is as God's children, as his daughters. Right, Fab? Yeah, and that makes it so beautiful. And so, yeah, such a wonderful time that we were able to spend with you tonight. And um, I want to pray for you. We we want to speak and declare blessings upon all of you. And again, yeah, you're seeing the uh, announcement here right now. If you want to consult, you can go ahead and personally message Miss Fab. Um, she's very much willing, you know, to um, to accommodate you and just just drop a PM okay, in there, uh, you know. Uh, in Facebook and IG, and or you can also email her. So why don't we just close our meeting for this evening? And we 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 want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord, dear Heavenly Father. I thank you for every viewer tonight, and even for those who will be watching this on replay. I really believe, Lord God, that it's no coincidence that we get to hear the word. We get to hear this message, even from a professional psychologist talking about identity and just really centering 
on Christ, you know, being the center of it all. I pray, Father God, that we really catch it. That we do not just think of, ah, this is just a religious thing. It's not. It is based on that beautiful relationship that you initiated, Jesus, when you came to earth more than 2,000 years ago. And not just that, but dying on the cross for us because you love us. How beautiful and how wonderful it is. And so I pray, Lord God, that everyone who's just watching and just with us right now, that they come to a point where they realize that unang una, Panginoon, you love them so much. You love us so much. That's why you gave your giving is has been motivated by love and will always be motivated by love and because of your giving because of your loving we are now counted as children your children we are part of your family and that's part of our identity and from there stems everything else lord god and so i thank you lord we are secure in that we are secure in that we are created in your image and likeness and we are positioned in you as well, Father. We heard that today. So I thank you. I bless everyone. And if there's anyone here who's still struggling, Father God, thank you, Lord God, that in this process that they are in, they will embrace, Father God, that the reality of who they are in you. And they will not give up. They will not give up. But they will just stick around until such time, Lord God, that their eyes be open to the truth of who they are in you, Lord God. So I bless them. I bless their families as well. If there's anyone who is sick right now, I pray for healing to be made manifest. I pray for provision upon everyone who needs provision. I thank you, Lord God, for wonderful surprises as well, Lord God. So blessings upon your people today. We love you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And of course, thank you, Miss Fab. You go ahead and say, um, say, um, Thank you, Pastor Heidi, and for everyone. I'm just, um, I want to say, if you are struggling and if you're hesitating to reach out because you're afraid of being judged or you're afraid that, are you, am I going to feel safe if I reach out to Pastor Heidi or to Miss Fab? I just want to give this security and also this, um, that you're safe, okay? And um, we provide a non judgmental and a compassionate space for you where the Christ or the love of Christ is what you're going to feel for. Okay, so thank you again and see you next next week. All right, yeah, All okay. Right. So yeah. Wonderful, and yes, we'll see you next week. If you don't have a home church yet, or for those of you to go who goes to New Life and you haven't been in church face-to-face, -face, we also invite you this Sunday in all our four services. You have four options actually, yes? And so yeah, God bless you, we'll see you. Stick around, we still have some video announcements. Bye. someone you know is believing for healing let's come together and agree in prayer for wholeness in your body come and join us in healing room live every tuesday at 7 p.m let's get talking on after sunday convo send in your question about this sunday's message and our pastors and leaders will break it down and answer them for you see you on asc mondays at 7 p.m if you want to begin your day with the word of god then you'll be in good company in morning devo Thursday to Saturday at 8 a.m. You don't have to go through life alone. We are here to help you deal with the stresses of life. Practical, psychological, and biblical guidance are available on mental health matters every Thursday at 7 p.m. All these weekly programs are broadcast live on newlife.ph on Facebook and New Life Media PH on YouTube. Did you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Know that your New Life family is celebrating with you. 
We can help you better understand your new life in Christ by attending our link class every Monday at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Welcome to the family. Do your friends and family know that we have four on-site Sunday services yet? Make sure to invite someone to be in the room with us next Sunday. If you are joining us online, please note the schedule of our services, which will be broadcast on newlife.ph on Facebook and New Life Media PH on YouTube. Together, we go higher as a church, and together, we continue to make Jesus known. See you online or on-site this week.